Okay, we are live on the air. I am super excited. I know it is six o'clock on the dot, and I know that everyone is is just getting acquainted, just getting situated. And um, before we get started, I'm sorry, technology. Let me do one thing, you all. Turning my mouth earlier. I'm sorry. Oops. Okay, I want you guys to just get a paper, uh, some paper, a pen, just get relaxed. I know some of you because I, they, they warned me that Empire is on for all my East Coast folks, but, but I apologize, I apologize. Hopefully you got the recorder going, but make sure you have some coffee, your tea, your cup of wine, whatever it is you need to relax because I have three beautiful couples on the line and they are going to be opening up to us tonight and just sharing uh, what it takes to build a solid uh, family, what it takes to build wealth. They have their ups, they have their downs. Some have been, some of the uh, couples on the call or on the webinar, they've been married for 25 years, 20 years, and then we have our newlyweds. So we have a wide spectrum of uh, time that they've been together, but they're going to share everything that it takes. They're going to lay it out on the table tonight. They're going to share even their struggles and what got them through their struggles. But just a little bit about myself for those of you who are joining us. Um, well, I tell you what, let me let me just let our caller still get on the call because it's only about 6.02. I'm going to give them a few more moments, you all, and then I'm going to just tell you all a little bit about myself, and then we're just going to get into this conversation on money. So hopefully you guys are excited out there as I am and the uh, couples that are on the webinar here because we're excited. We want to just pour into you all tonight. So make sure you have that paper, that pencil. And go get yourself some water really quick, and we're going to get started promptly, promptly at 6.05. .05. It's 6.02 right now. So, okay. And hopefully our third person is getting on. So do you guys have, for my audience out there, I'm just going to say hopefully you're recording um, the uh um, uh, what is it, Empire? I personally don't watch television, so I had no clue that it was coming on tonight, or I probably would have did this on a Tuesday night, so I apologize. <laughs> Maybe I need to watch TV, huh? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <She's> <laughs> saying, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, yes, yes. <laughs> so, a few more minutes. A few more minutes. And as we're waiting, to my couples out there, I sincerely appreciate each of you um, taking time. I know we're on different time zones, but I sincerely appreciate you taking time and just joining me and my community on this call and just, just um, br br broadening the awareness of what it takes as couples, as married individuals. Even before you say, I do, you know, talking to the community and just letting them know what does it take to when we talk about finances, what does it really mean? What's important? Because if you don't talk about it beforehand, you're definitely going to have problems going into it. So, a few more minutes. If you're just joining us, welcome to the call. We have about one more minute and we're going to go ahead and go full steam ahead and get going. Okay, so it is just about that time. I have 6.05. Just really quickly, really briefly, my name is Cosette M. White. I am the founder and CEO of My Financial Home. We have two divisions under um, My Financial Home. We have a tax division and we also have our coaching and our speaking side, one second, um, underneath us. And so Tonight we're talking to married couples and we're talking about how they build a strong unit because after all, one team, one dream. And as I talk to these individuals and as I talk to others, what I do in my business, I help individuals gain clarity and focus as it relates to their finances. I also um, help them build wealth and I, I'm just passionate about what I do. So let me go ahead and introduce our um, couples that are on the call tonight. First of all, we have the Scotts, we also have the Enriquez, and we also have the Thomases. And they may be joining us a little late because they had a little bit of um, 
problems joining us, but you know, technology, but they will be joining us. So really quickly, Z Scott, um, Greg and Lamika Scott, they are the proud parents of six beautiful children. Did you hear me? I said six beautiful girls. They are executive ambassadors, yes, and they will tell you all about each one of them. That's got to be tough. Six different personalities, and poor Greg, but really, yeah. because you want mama in the house, so you got seven different personalities, Woo. but you're doing it. But they are executive ambassadors with TLC, and they help open up the U.S. market, and they will share all of that. Um, with us as we continue with this, but they are top leaders within the organization, and I love it because they are um, both men and women of God, and they will share a little bit more about their journey, and then our next couple, they, well, let me back up, the Scots, they've been together for 20 years. Can you hear me? I said 20 years. So that is a milestone. And as we know in today's age, as we talk about finances being the number two, it was the number one, but it is now the number two reason why individuals get divorced. They stuck through it, you all. They've managed to work through it thick and thin. They've had their ups, they had their downs for 20 long years. That's, that's a milestone. Our next couple, they are newlywed. They are just about to hit that one year mark, newlywed. 12 months, but we have Andy Enriquez and we have Dr. Cassandra Enriquez. Andy is the founder and exec, uh, founder and CEO of Show Up For My Life, where he helps individuals uh, craft their speaking skill. He also helps business owners um, develop other things, and I'll let Andy elaborate on that, but I do know that he helps craft your speaking. Believe me, I know because he's my coach. <laughs> <laughs> And then we have Dr. Cassandra Enriquez. She helps individuals. She helps women. Let's be very clear. She helps women um, find that special love made in their life. She is a love coach for success. So what a great way to connect. Um, so I'm going to open up. I don't know. You guys can both join me at any time. Feel free to jump in. But I just want both of you. And we'll start with this. We'll start. There we go. We'll start with the newlyweds. Just share with our listeners what has, um, well, tell them about yourself. I know I shared, but I didn't share everything. So go ahead, Andy and Dr. Cassandra, just share with the listeners a little bit more information about yourselves. Well, ladies first. Oh, so sweet. <laughs> Learned it already, right? <laughs> um, well, Cosette, not too much to toot my own horn, but I, I definitely love avenues like this to be able to pour into people's lives because one of the things that I've found in terms of dealing with successful single women is that sometimes marriage can be a scary type of thing whether they've been married before or never been married it's like wow you know th there's gonna take some effort but it's a fun effort and hopefully through this conversation that we have we can we can start to open some doors or open some minds to people who have been close to marriage and being able to work things out because it's not easy but at the end of the day it's something that could be more than rewarding and amazing absolutely so because uh, let me just say, first of all, we're happy to be here. Yay. Also, sharing the platform uh, with the Scots that are 20 years Woo! into the game. And so, <laughs> uh, thumbs up for that. Uh, for those of you that are meeting me for the first time, my name is Andy Enriquez. I'm a strategic storytelling coach. I help speakers as well as organizations to be able to craft their signature story so they could better connect with their customers, their clients, and be able to have more impact. Uh, and so, you know, I have the privilege of marrying this uh, beautiful young lady next to me. Uh, it's been uh, literally... <laughs> Month make one year, so we're going on that one year anniversary we're going to Dubai. trip. Uh, yeah, the wife booked the trip to Dubai, Dubai. Uh, and gentlemen, you'll start learning about that. You know, <laughs> I sort of found out about that trip after it was booked. Hey, it stuff. was in the budget, but, but we're looking. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my goodness, did it freeze? Yes, they did. Okay, so, oh. There we go. There they go, Great. they're coming back. Yeah, we're set again. That's the only thing about this thing, it freeze up on you. Go ahead, Scott, it's your turn. Well, look, ladies first again, so I'm gonna <laughs> let her go first. I've learned that after 20 years. <laughs> oh my goodness, I was just, I was listening to them, and God knows when he, when he, she said, 
Um, well, when they talked about Dubai, I'm thinking, oh my goodness, because I was just telling Greg that we went to Hawaii <laughs> um, a few weeks ago. One thing that I've learned about travel is that it really begins to make you start to think about the other places where you want to go. And so Dubai mm -hmm. is somewhere <laughs> that I definitely want to go. But um, as Cosette said, and thank you so much just even for having us here uh, you know, mm -hmm. on tonight and just to also share the stage is also um, refreshing, you know, just to be able to sit alongside of people that just want more in life and that are just doing it, you know, it's yeah. just it's right. a good feeling. But as Cosette mentioned, we do have six beautiful daughters, Jasmine, Janae, Jayla, Joy, Jaira, and Jordan. Did oh, I wow. miss anybody? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you might can see them right here. There they go. Yay. So, um, yeah, and so um, because of all of the girls, you know, um, I was a part of corporate America, and I just I made a decision to, to, to pull out of work because we had three children in daycare, and I've always kind of had an entrepreneur spirit, you know, just wanted to generate my own wealth, but it was during that time that really got the ball running, and it was, it was a pivotal turn, you know, for Greg and I in terms of just really pursuing entrepreneurship because of the children. And so started doing some internet marketing, found out that I loved it. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of how we started to, you know, set a foundation. And it was when, you know, we got proven results that uh, Greg was like, okay, let's do this together. And so he'd always been very supportive of uh -huh. the type of decisions that I made. But now, you know, we're doing it together. We really have a good time doing it, traveling the world, speaking to so many people, just imparting, sharing, and just giving people um, hope that they can also have more and, you know, in, and be able to do it with a lot of children or not. <laughs> <laughs> well, Cosette, definitely thank you for inviting us to this call to be able to speak no with problem. everyone. Thank you, uh, Andy, Cassandra. Real pleasure to meet you guys and actually share the stage with you guys. Yes. You guys, you guys have the newlywed glow about you. Yes, it's all over you. Listen, Andy, one thing you said, I've all, look, after 20 years of marriage, okay, there's one thing you have to know. We are always the last to know. <laughs> 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 Everything is in play when we find out. So, but, you know, it's been 20 years of blitz. It's like it was yesterday, you know. I was blessed to be able to marry this beautiful woman, my soulmate. You know, and I, I say that strongly because I really do believe that. But, you know, through the years, we've been through a lot, ups and downs, which has just made our bond stronger. And um, here we are today, being blessed tremendously and able to do a lot of things and help a lot of people. Excellent, excellent, excellent. All right, so that was great. Now, I know um, throughout our conversation, um, the Scots, and I haven't talked to the Enriquez, but I know you shared a situation with me where the two of you had some ups and downs and, and, and you went through a, a tough period. You want to share that with the uh, attendees that are listening to us and just share how you overcame it, how you got through it as a, as a team, as a unit, and um, it may have even had some impact on the girls. So just share with us that information. Well, um, back in uh, 2011, um, again, we were married in 1995, and, and we've been through a lot of ups and downs since then. Uh, even when we first got married, we believed in uh, right, remaining debt-free, okay? That was our thoughts, yeah. but <laughs> as, as the kids started multiplying, it seemed like, and, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I tell people often, we changed pamphlets for 15 years straight. Wow. So our kids were, they came in a way where when one would get out of diapers, the next one was in them. So we literally changed Pampers for 15 years straight. But back in 2011, that was our worst financial year yet. Took a major um, loss. Yeah, we took a major business loss, a major, uh, we lost everything basically. My wife, she'll elaborate on that a lot more. Uh, but from my standpoint, as a man in this family um, who was raised by a father who always believed in holding his arm. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it, it took a, it took, it knocked the wind out of me, and 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 I had to regroup quick because I had seven women dependent on me. Yeah. Uh, so I had to regroup quick. That that meant taking some of my pride, putting it in the back, and doing things to actually get us back up to a point where we really could sustain. Yeah. Um, but but through it all, it made us stronger. And one thing I must say that my wife 
through the whole situation that we went through financially always was right there at my side. You mm -hmm. know, it was never you did this or I never looked at her and said, well, it's your fault of this, mm -hmm. you know, and, and so through the whole situation, it made us even stronger as a unit and even as a couple, a married couple moving forward, you know, and our kids uh, were able to see us persevere through that. Right. So even in that, it was a lesson for them because one thing I've always strongly believed in is that you teach through the lesson, you teach through what you're going through. Mm -hmm. uh, so I always would talk to my kids and make them aware of what was happening, aware of the situation so that they could see how we were pushing through and persevering. Mm -hmm. okay, okay. And, uh, one of the things that I want to really stress is the importance of really holding on to the vision that you've set for yourselves. Mm -hmm. And because, although it was very hard, because when it, I didn't share that, um, and we, we just shared our story for the first time um, over the past few months just on stage at, at one of our conferences that we had to get on food stamps. And even uh, for a couple that it wasn't like we had a whole bunch, but we never was at that point where we couldn't provide groceries, right? And so but one of the things that I really had to do and we both had to do was hold on to the vision that we had both held in our hearts right. and, and that vision was always that we wanted uh, to have a debt-free life right. and so um, and, and even it took a lot of faith and it even took you know God dealing with us and saying you know don't focus on the pain focus on the prop the promise because in this I want you all to be a, a beacon of light and a beacon of hope that people can also come out but Unless I took you through this place, I, you wouldn't really be able to fully grasp the whole concept of sharing with someone else how they can bounce back if you've not done it. Right. And so just through it all, we had to really hold on um, to, to the vision that we had for ourselves and, um, and really pursue the, the promises again and not more so the pain of what we were enduring again it was painful for those of you who are looking in um, to this broadcast on tonight or maybe you um, you know listening to the replay on tonight and you may be dealing with some serious financial struggles going on in your marriage or you know in your household you may be wondering is it worth it do I continue to pursue my goals do I continue to stand firm on what I've been taught what I believe what I thought about it it is so much worth it because I'm gonna tell you some of the promises they are so sweet and so even the, the even scripture tells us that the blessings of the Lord make it rich and add of no sorrow and so that was just something we had to deal with and as we've been able to come back out of it it has meant so much, and a lot of people is giving a lot of people hope. That that is important. That that that's an inspiration in itself, Lanika and Greg. So um, I see that we have our other couple. So let me just jump over really quickly and um, give her an opportunity to uh, share. Miss Willa, hello. How are you? Can you hear us? Oh, does she not have her volume on? Okay, I tell you what, while I'm working with her, I'm going to switch over to um, Andy and Cassandra. Now, I know just from hearing your story that um, there were some financial struggles, and it probably was prior to the marriage, or you want to just elaborate on that, um, Andy? Are you guys frozen? Oh, they're frozen. Can, can you hear us? I can hear can you. Hear us? Can you hear us? I can hear you, yeah. Can you hear me? Go ahead. Okay. Well, yeah, we can hear you loud and clear. Okay. Why don't you share struggles that maybe, and I know that you all are newlywed, but maybe struggles that maybe you have encountered, and I know that you shared some before with us publicly, Andy, and how did that really impact your life, and how did that impact things? You know, I know you two have dated for some time prior to saying I do, but just share how that impacted your life. Uh, thank you. Well, you know, it's it's interesting because we actually got hit, um, you know, with the financial difficulty very early on. We were actually in the dating process 
uh, and I was in the process of actually thinking about uh, proposing to Cassandra and was actually in the process of looking at rings and speaking to a jeweler who was actually designing her ring. Um, and I got hit with a lawsuit, something I didn't anticipate. I invested uh, with a company that ended up on that you know, big TV show called American Greed, uh, where I invested in the company, made the investment, uh, and actually profited. Uh, but come to find out, it was an elaborate Ponzi scheme. So everybody who invested in the company had to pay the money back. And so I got hit with a lawsuit that was asking for everything I made, including my original investment. So now here I am about to propose to somebody, and I'm in the middle of a lawsuit for literally tens of thousands of dollars, uh, and I'm trying to make this decision. Do I postpone, you know, actually proposing to this woman because I'm not quite sure what's going to happen with this, uh, with this whole lawsuit? And, you know, what the amazing thing is through the process, uh, you know, I think it was, it was wonderful because it was something that allowed me very early on uh, to know what kind of a – of a wife I had, you know, that during the process, uh, you know, we had some discussions and, you know, we, we got down on our knees. We started doing a lot of prayer. We had our, our Bible group uh, praying for us. And, and I'll never forget this, you know, Cassandra doesn't necessarily uh, know this, but I remember uh, literally driving from my house, going to the parking lot of Chase Bank. Uh, and I had a jeweler out in California uh, that was waiting for the initial deposit uh, to start working on her ring. And at the same time, this lawsuit was out of control. I had no idea whether I was got to pay this money or if things were going to work out. And just with faith, I just decided, you know, I, I, I was out there in that car for about 30, 45 minutes, and I decided to walk in, and I spoke to the banker, and we went ahead and sent that wire. And the amazing, beautiful thing is, uh, that lawsuit, I was scheduled to actually go to court in New York, um, and my wife was going to go where she was dating me at the time, was going with me to New York to support me, and in a matter of days, things turned around. Uh, literally, that lawsuit got settled, and we took the flight over to New York. I got a phone call about a speaking engagement, so they actually paid for the flight to New York, and at that speaking engagement, I actually proposed to her using a flash mob, and so just everything turned around, uh, and as you know, Cosette, I mean, it was it was insane. That I think that video now has like over, I don't know how many views, 10, this, over 10,000 views, and people think this was all mapped out, but this all happened in a series of just five days. Wow. Uh, and so it was, it was crazy. We got hit hard. Um, but, you know, I think the beautiful thing is in that case was that, you know, we both, uh, you know, we just literally prayed together. We know we got down on our knees and, and uh, you know, this, this woman showed me very early on that she was willing to support me. Uh, and I'm so grateful things worked out because I, I, I spent a little pretty penny on that ring. So uh, <laughs> I appreciate you. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. <laughs> But Cosette, what, what I've really come to find, and for those who are listening in or watching who are single and thinking about, you know, who is the right person for me, a praying man, a man mm -hmm. that seeks God in times of trouble. What I saw was a man that was faced with so much adversity that most people, it would have wiped them out. I, I specifically know of people who have had heart attacks in the same situation, being so stressed out over finances, not knowing where the money's going to come from on the next day. But he knew that there was a God, and he prayed to that God, and he sought that God, and he was in his word all day, every day. And it was just so amazing to see him fast, to see him pray, to see him in his word. That's what got me excited about him to say, yes, you know, there was no question in my heart because you understand that there's always going to be rough times. There's always going to be something that comes up. But if you marry someone that truly seeks God, that's what makes the difference. I don't want to be down with my family. Now, since we're on that, just share with me, either of you, because I know this was always a struggle for myself when I was married. Uh, when it comes to budgeting and when it comes to the true money, getting down to it, do you, as a married couple, do you all have joint accounts? And do you have your own separate accounts? <laughs> <laughs> you should let the Thomases know that we can hear them. <laughs> Say that again? I think we can hear the Thomases now because I know the Scots were on mute. so I can hear them. Yes. Yeah, so just so you know, Thomases, we can't see you, but we can hear you just in case. Just in case. All right. I think she's still, yeah, I, I, I can't see her, but yes. Yeah. So, so both of you just kind of share because that's always been like an interesting topic and it's, it's always one that 
is kind of interesting to me because every family does it a little different. Yeah. It's, well, I mean, we can start, um, you know, after 20 years, we've learned each other. Okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, you know, I, I, I truly believe God gives us gifts and talents, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it's a matter of us recognizing who has the gift and who has the talent <laughs> <laughs> in different areas. Right? Okay, so, right. For our household, Lanika and I, we have a joint account. We have our business, uh, Scott Marketing Group, that has its own account. We have a joint account together, and then we also have uh, two separate accounts that we use uh, for allowances for each other. Um, mm -hmm. And we, we kind of pay ourselves, if you will. Okay. So we use that like that. <laughs> okay. So, so let me hear from Andy and Cassandra. What do you guys have? You know, it's, it's interesting because we, we, we did a course together, Financial Peace University. Recommended. And um, at that time, we were showing each other finances. And I remember I was like, this is my first time ever letting a woman see all my accounts and all that. And she was like, well, hello. This is my first time letting a guy see all my accounts. I was like, excuse me, right? <laughs> but, but, yeah, I, ideally, in, in the course, they were talking about how, you know, ultimately you just want to have one account. But the way we truthfully have it is we have a joint account in which we pay out all of our, you know, bills at the household bills and expenses and the things that we know that are budgeted for on a monthly basis. Of course, naturally, we have separate business accounts, and then we also have separate personal accounts. But 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 the end goal the end goal is and, and this has been a little point of a uh, you know a little friction contention, uh, contention right. and drill. Right. You know, we're supposed to get into one account. Look at you the know Scots. what I mean? They crack it up over there. Look at them moving <laughs> trying to work it out. We know because it's been twenty years <laughs> and so we just had to. <laughs> yeah, Listen. so we're we're supposed okay. to get into that one account, here's, here's but right, right now note. this is working. Here's you know? my here's my side note, family. Right, <laughs> my brother over here, he has many different business accounts. So I tell him this whole joint account of one account for everything, it'll be confusion. So then on a monthly basis, we see forty thousand dollars in the account. Do I go on a shopping spree? You don't want that, right? So we want to make sure that we have separate accounts for everything and be able to have it where we need to have it. And we budget, right? We budget for just about everything from dinner <laughs> to travel to the cleaning lady to, to the laundry tokens. You know, we we budget for just about everything. So I hey. think it's fine okay. the way it's set up. I'm just saying it'll be hey. Pure Co madness. Co we have everything in one pocket. Eh? Yeah, yeah. You know that 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 sounds great. And ultimately, because that she knows I'm a you know I'm a little stickler He's with the. To, yeah, yeah. <laughs> biblical family joint account. I don't know that Bible verse, Scott. So Y'all seem to know the Bible. You know that Bible verse? <laughs> Tell me. No, I didn't say it was a Bible verse. I didn't say it was yeah. a Bible verse. The, the, the Bible verse says the man knoweth the money. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. I'm about to frame. I'm going to frame that verse right there, Greg. Hey, give me my allowance. Give me my allowance. We'll be good. Give me my allowance. See, we, we, we have separate accounts set up for allowances that we pay ourselves with. But, see, it, it took me a while to understand this. But I would look at the account, and I was like, oh, my God, where's the money, right? So it took me a while to understand. But I know now that with these allowances, I don't even have to look at that account she spends from. I don't even have to know what's going on in it because it's 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 set up. We've got it over there. If she wants to go out and spend a five thousand dollars, then it's on her. She got it because <laughs> she's spending it on me most of the time. Anyway. Nice. <laughs> nice. Well, let me ask you guys this: since we're on allowances and you all have those six girls, how do you guys handle allowances? And and it goes. You know, different opinions. Some think that, well, no, kids should not have allowances. You know, they don't need to be paid for cleaning the house. That's part of the team. Yes, it is part of the team. But share with me how you got your opinion on what do you think about allowances and whether or not, um, at growing up, we should be giving our young children uh, allowances. Because, see, I look at it from a standpoint of we're not just giving them allowances. We're teaching them how to manage money. So let me just have your opinion on it. You know your take on it. Well, one thing with us and what we've done over the years is we haven't really given our kids allowances. Mm -hmm. But one thing that we've done is, like, I have a my daughter; she's in college now. Mm -hmm. So even when she was in high school, um, you know, certain things we would do 
I will I would set it up where she would pay for things out of her account, mm -hmm. and m my wife and I was always there on the back end to make sure it was done correctly, mm -hmm. but to also you know if she needed a little help on the back end we would help her. So even in college right now, she she's maintaining a 3.8 GPA. Uh, mm -hmm. um, she's working two jobs. Oh wow. Uh, and That's and great. she's paying all of her own bills on car insurance everything. Oh. But again, my wife and I on the back end, mm -hmm. we're helping her. But she's maintaining everything beautifully. That's good. She's maintaining a three point eight and eight, and she's managing two jobs. Yes. That's awesome. That's good. That's good. Um, now, you two over here. I know we have no children just yet, but just I, we we grew up. So, what's your take on allowances? Did you guys get allowances growing up? I, I didn't. I, I didn't. didn't I didn't necessarily My get allowances, but it, it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be <laughs> real interesting just watching the way we interact with our cousins and and nephews and and nieces and so okay. forth. We we are you know forever doing some kind of motivational lesson and so forth. So it's, it might get a little out of control in our household. But but the what what I typically do with my little cousins and so forth, I normally give give them jobs. I give them jobs to do if okay. they want to earn some additional money. I mean, outside of it being like you got straight A's and you know or you know you're you're doing well and I'm just paying something for you. But other than that, hey, we've got products that need to be fulfilled. You know, we when we when we actually go to speaking engagements, we need people who are going to work the table. We need greeters. Yeah. Yeah. We need people who are going to be hosts. We need people who are going to work the room. Yeah. And so, yeah. listen, they they do get jobs. And uh, you know, just the other day, oh yeah, uh, I had you know, my niece um, come work in a speaking engagement for me, and I said, "Look at here." She said, "Oh, Auntie Cass, can I get this bracelet and this T-shirt?" I said, "Honey." You could get 20% commission of what you sell. Now, let me see what you got. You yeah. know, so she made her little commission. It was $12, okay? So she didn't sell that much. I said, you need to get your game up. But what was pretty cool is I was able to transfer the money into her bank account, and she was able to accept it. And I, I broke down to her. I said, okay, you've been talking about how you want this job. But, you know, what is minimum wage nowadays? Maybe $8? So yeah. literally, you would have to work an hour and change to make $12. And how long did it take you to make that $12? She's like... One minute, I said exactly. So just yes. imagine, yes. you know, you start to understand that money can work for you, and you don't have to work that hard for money. So right. that's that's the way I've I've been teaching it right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good. I don't know if you guys know, but a couple of, about a month ago, maybe well back in July, I made a post on Facebook, and I asked a simple question of, do you um do you make your kids earn the money, or do you make them, or do you give it to them? And it was just an innocent post, but anyway, it went viral um, simply because of the picture that I had on there. But it was interesting, some of the comments that I started getting as far as, I'm not going to pay my kid to do work around the house. They live here. I live here. But, you know, I took it from a standpoint of it's a way to teach our kids how to manage their money. It's a way to um, show them how to appreciate. And also, in, in today's generation, you know, our kids have this attitude of entitlement. Mm. So, you know, just giving them money, it's just handing them, handing them, handing them, and then their hands are always out. So if we don't train them and teach them right now, then that's going to be what they think they should be having as adults. It should be given to me. So that's why I kind of pose the question um, of do you – um, how do you, how, what's your opinion as it relates to so, so that Just one more point. I, so yeah. I, I'm on the radio every Wednesday, and one of the things we talked about today is a mom posted on Facebook a note she made to her son. The 13-year-old said, Mom, you know what? I make my own money. I have a job. I don't, I'll don't. i buy back everything you bought me. So she said, okay, no problem. So the rent is one thirty. The electricity, you need to yeah. take out the trash. You need to make your own meal. Let me know if you want to come back to being my son or if yeah. you want to be my, my roommate and we'll renegotiate. Like, literally, she said, okay, you want to be out on your own? Here's the bills. Yeah. <laughs> I thought that was that was stellar. You know, like, okay. Right. I think once that, that reality check, and we probably, because I know I had it myself, once the parents lay out all the bills, here's the electricity, here's the gas, here's the light, you think you can handle this? You want to watch cable? Here's the cable bill. You want to handle this? There it is. So, you know, reality check. A question for you two. Do you have date night as it relates to sitting down and doing those bills? <laughs> See, she she one person just handle the bills. <laughs> she, she pointed at the guy with the gifts and talents for the numbers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, you have both gifts and talents? I thought one had gifts and the other had talents. Yeah, I know, right? Come on, man. Come on, man. <laughs> 
but, so, um, so you handle all the, you handle? Yes, yeah, I, I pretty much handle um, all of the bills for the household. Um, I have my monthly anniversary date. Usually on the fifth of every month, I sit down and I just complete everything. Um, you know, because I, I, I pretty much like to just take that one day, knock it all out, and I don't have to worry about it again for at least 30 days. Uh, okay. So that's usually how I handle it. So do you um do you involve Lanika? Do you come in, Lanika, and get involved? I don't. I don't. Yeah, just 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 <laughs> <laughs> this is funny. I'm the type and this was this is so funny last year. <laughs> oh God. Cause he's more organized. I'm the type that like to go and make the money, right? And then I'm just like, yeah, you just take it all and just do whatever. <laughs> you got okay. to do with it and organize it. So no, and I'm perfectly fine with that because that's just not my strength. <laughs> okay, well you gotta the opposites attract, and if he's the money man, then that, then we're okay. What about you two? Yeah, so Cosette, I was old school, you know, where I sat down with my checkbooks for. <laughs> all my rentals and all my properties each month and cut my checks and go to the bank and hand it in. Wait and so time. my wife looked at me like I had two heads. She was like, what are you doing? I was like, cutting checks. She's like, cut checks. We don't cut checks around here. We do automatic deposits. You need to let, listen, you need to right now log in. I need to set. And she set everything up automatic and all that stuff. So as far as our household bills, everything is automatic. I still keep some of my rental properties old school where I actually cut checks out and so forth. It drives her crazy. But as far as the household, she has everything set up automatic. So uh, I can admit it now. It has made life a little easier. Oh, it's made life a lot easier. Not a little easier. A lot easier when you have to oh my goodness. It's nothing better than just having the bills set up and just automatically go out. I'm, I'm writing bills, stamps. Actually, I have some stamps sitting on my desk right here, and I was suddenly thinking I needed to go to the post office, but I forgot I had them over here. But come on, Andy. Yeah, get it together. <laughs> I, I, I specifically read a book called Automatic Millionaire that changed my mind with that. Just the amount of time that we waste when it comes yeah. to sitting down and looking through the bills. And, you know, sometimes you're scared because you've been in that scarcity place before. Can I cover it? But right. guess what? You've been covering it for every month for the last couple of years. You got this. You, you know, got so set it up. Set it and forget it. And we even have our savings set up that way. So, you know, it makes it really beautiful. And the thing is that we're of the same cloth. So we're both actually pretty frugal. You know, he might nice like a nice watch every now and then, and I like a nice trip, hence us going to Dubai. But other than that, we're, we're both pretty frugal when it comes to spending. Okay, okay. Now, I'm going to bounce back for a minute. Um, talking about savings, because I know the Scott, well, both of you have made mention of an incident that occurred. Do you all save for a rainy day? Oh, Lord. Oh, she got a smile on her. <laughs> Do you all smile for a smile? Do you smile save for a rainy day? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, actually, uh, you know, being through a lot of the things we went through, uh, even when we first got married, like I was saying earlier uh, on this uh, hangout, you know, we always wanted to be debt free. Mm -hmm. So even. You know, we, 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 we lost it all and we bounced back. So we were able to, you know, acquire a home debt-free. We were able to, you know, get ourselves back. Everything we have right now, we're debt-free. We're absolutely debt-free right now. Mm -hmm. um, so so when you're talking about savings, we have no choice but to have savings. <laughs> even, even if we didn't want to, you know, but, but it is important to be able to have that cushion. So even with the allowance that we do pay ourselves, in my mouth, in my mind. numbers mine, okay, <laughs> even with the allowance that we allow ourselves, we figured up where we have savings even from our allowance. Mm -hmm. so, so, but, and that's what we use as cushion, and we use that not to have to tap into any, any other income that we have. Okay. Over here. <clears throat> that's awesome. So, Cosette, we, we met up with a financial planner. Uh, and the so, sexiest date I've ever been on, okay? Financial <laughs> planner and accountant. I said, baby, you love me. She's just happy because she, she's a uh, beneficiary on that uh, million dollar <laughs> life insurance policy. Hey, so, you know, you know so every time we do a son dangerous, I always look over at her saying, hey, yo, you not wish your son's going to happen to me. <laughs> <laughs> oh. No, no, but, but, but Cosette, yeah, so what, what we did is we established a, a, a sort of a comfort zone number. Uh, which was, you know, close to probably about a year's worth of, yeah. you know, at the bare minimum uh, worth of income that we put aside 
uh, as pretty much our as our emergency fund. And then we're yeah. So with Andy, what was beautiful, so talking about joint accounts, Andy really already had that money saved, and he decided to make that our savings so that we can move from there to knock out things together. So, you know, even though we talk about not having joint, that's still something that I recognize you for because you did that on your own. And for many people, you know, what was so cool about our financial planner, he said, what's your comfort number? I think that's right. a, a key yeah learning thing because not everybody has the same comfort. I'm like, okay, if I have 10000 in the bank, I feel comfortable. Andy looked at me like, that ain't no money. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, I'm not comfortable. That could pay one month a bill. That's not okay. So, <laughs> So it was, it was really good to come to a place where he was like, okay, well, this is my comfort number, and I actually already have that in the bank, so I'll make that our savings so that we can move from there. So yeah. we've started making our own savings together on top of that to put towards like a home so we could pay in cash and things of that sort, which yeah. he's opened my eyes more to, you know, massive savings versus, you know, doing little trickle, trickle stuff. Right. Instead of 10000 yeah. <laughs> I'm with Andy on that one. That's enough. Yeah. That's, but listen, so you know what, Andy, you talked about something. Um, um, wealth and building wealth and putting um, emergency tactics and whatnot in place. As a family, do you guys have things such in place, things in place such as your will? And you know, anything can happen um, at any given time. Life insurance policies. As a family, as a unit, as one, how do you guys uh, address that to those out there, to our listeners? So, so uh, I'll, I'll let the Scots go right afterwards because I'm sure because they got 20 years in the game, so I know they're going to be able to hit a lot of wisdom. But one of the things I, I, I could say is, uh, you know, once you get married, and I know Greg will be able to attest to this, you start thinking a little differently as a man. Um, and so I realized that there are some changes that really need to be done. So number one, I didn't have life insurance and my thought process, well, why do I need life insurance? I don't have a wife. I don't have any kids. So as soon as we got married and even then I was going to postpone life insurance until we actually had children. But because of my other assets, I realized I'd be doing her a disservice. Something happened to me. So yeah. we both, she had life insurance. She upped her life insurance. I got life insurance. That was one of the things I did. The other thing that I did was that. I actually owned all of my rental properties under one entity, and mm -hmm. I had gotten away with that for quite a bit of time, but as, as I mentioned, when I was dealing with that lawsuit, I noticed that that allowed, that was a, a, a room where I was very vulnerable, and it could have caused my household to really get hurt. Uh, if you know, if if at that point we're married and now we are married, and if I have kids, so yeah. another thing that we did was I actually went and you know shoved out money with an attorney and actually separated every single uh, rental property into its own separate LLC yeah. and make sure they had you know a separate liability and each separate yeah. rental property has its own bank account. So if God forbid something were to happen liability wise that liability would be isolated to that one particular property and we wouldn't expose all the other assets that are really, uh, you know, in, in, in the household. Um, and so, I mean, those, those, those were some of the, you know, really key, uh, key things that, that, you know, where there really needed to be a shift. And of course, naturally mean up with the financial planner and, you know, deciding what our, you know, savings, what we're going to invest, rolling over, you know, some of her 401ks and so forth. Uh, and so it's, it's, it's amazing what we've accomplished um, just because there's just a, a shift in mindset. All right, right, this is a team, you're building a family. And so you got to have a solid foundation. Right. I, I, I agree with you. And let's hear from the Scots. Yeah, and I, I definitely agree with everything Andy said wholeheartedly. You know, um, even when Lanika and I first got together, we started having kids. You know, I grew up um, I grew up in the rural area of North Carolina. Uh, my parents, you know, my dad was very hard working. My mom worked in the school system. Um, wasn't always a, a whole lot of education about the life insurance and things of that nature, but my dad always told me, you've got to have that life insurance. Mm -hmm. um, so even when we got married, we got together, uh, we started out with insurance plan, but even when we hit the hard times, uh, sometimes one of the first things to go is life insurance. Yeah. Um, because you have to go back and you have to actually recalculate and you have to strike out some of the things that at yeah. the time it may not seem that important. Yeah. Uh, so that was one of the first things that went, you know, when we had to scale back. 
But that it, it's so important to have that in place. I don't care how much money you make. Right. You still want to have those life insurance mm -hmm. policies and different things like that in place. And, mm -hmm. you know, being in the position that I am, you know, I got a beautiful wife. I got six children. You know, having the will, the life insurance, and everything in place is so important. Mm -hmm. You know, that has to be at the top of your list. Yes, it does. That power of attorney, all of that is just mm -hmm. is valuable. So, um, great. Anything else um, before we kind of? Because I see, I, I don't know what happened to our to our other couple, but um, they'll hear us. But but really quickly. Um, Anything else, and, and I'm going to bounce back over here to the newlyweds. Let's share a little bit because I know that there are some individuals out there that are listening that are on the call, and they're probably contemplating, do I say I do? But why don't you two share some important key tips with them, um, what they should be looking at, what they should be doing um, prior to even saying I do? Because, you know, finances, as I said, that's the number two reason um, why so many go through divorce and end up because they just couldn't get it together. So share some key tips, um, you know, counseling beforehand, opening up. You, you you must know what's going on in that other person's financial world. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, absolutely. So we could we can sort of bounce back and forth. So you want to hit them with one? Yeah. So um, one of the one of the biggest things that that I've found important that I, I see people you know skip over when it comes to marriage is 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 being able to take the time to do the premarital counseling and the reason why I find this to be so important is because usually a proper class will take you through just about every aspect of a relationship usually in relationships what happens it's you and me alone for a long period of time I love you so much here's the ring okay we're married and it's like there's so many things that you did not speak about from right. child rearing to your true belief systems right. to your finances and there's not to say that you're gonna end up talking about everything but it opens the door to have real conversation and we know people that didn't make it through premarital counseling they're like look this isn't it you know and it's okay to be able to walk away beforehand right absolutely and so you know, a couple of things, Cosette, is that, you know, sometimes we try to avoid the more difficult and uncomfortable conversations, and, and finances tend to be one of them. So one of the things I would definitely say is, you know, have those those tougher conversations up front, because if you don't, oftentimes it comes back and bites you on the back end. And so, you know, finances obviously is one of those perhaps more difficult conversations that a lot of people tend to really try to avoid having that conversation because maybe uh, they don't want to have to talk about what their debt is. They don't want to talk about, you know, how much money they have or how much money they don't have, how much they have in savings and so forth. And so all those things are really important if you're going to be building a life with somebody and really pushing forward. And another thing that I think is really, really important is just understanding what uh, each person's financial blueprint is. Yeah. And so, and, and, and I don't think there's an exact formula. You know, some people uh, believe, oh, well, if, if, if you know, uh, one person's a saver and the other person's a spender, then it can't work. Well, oftentimes I find that that, that actually does work because they actually balance each other out. But, but I think what's important is that you actually are able to, um, you know, know what each other's financial blueprints are going into it because you can really, really hit some some tough walls if you had no idea that your person it was like a complete, you know, just out of control spender yeah. Or if the other person was just completely like cheap, frugal, doesn't want to let a penny out. And so right. there needs to be, you need to have an idea of what your values are and whether or not your financial blueprints line up. And if they can balance out, because that's going to really be important as you sort of move forward. Something else I'll share with um, all of you is understanding their debt and then their vision. So for instance, I've had clients before saying, well, you know, I'm dating someone, but he has like a a hundred thousand dollars in debt. I don't know if I could get with that because I'm totally debt free and he has all this debt. I don't know if this is the person for me. Remember that happened before you, you know? So right. you never know. And the thing is that his mom had cancer and then he took out some loans for her, you know? So you want to look at, okay, well, what's the vision? How are you going to get out of debt? Do right. you have a plan to get out of debt or are you just going to sit in it? And if that person has a plan or is seeking help or doing something different, give them a chance because something, everything happened before the day you guys got together don't 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 judge don't be so judgmental of the past but look at okay what is their future saying and how do they want to erase that debt or get rid of it or maybe they just don't know
no, not everyone has this kind of education. And we thank you, Cosette, for having this as an avenue. But these are things that specifically I had to, to seek out growing up, a lot of personal development, network marketing, financial peace, church, you know, and not everyone has those same opportunities. Right. So you know, educate the person before you totally dismiss them. Right, right. Okay. Well, I see that um, I see that the Thomases were still trying to get in. She just uh, reached out to me. They're really, really, I think it's the volume. But we are down to the last 10 minutes. So before we wrap this up, I want for both um, families, I want for you guys because I really believe in empowering individuals. I believe in spreading um, and just sharing, sharing our businesses. And, and both families are business owners. And I want for each of you to just leave some information about how people can contact you should they want to, what's going on in your world, what's going on in your businesses, and just how our listeners can connect with you should they want to. So um, we'll go with, we'll go right here with Lanika and Greg and just, just the floor is yours. <laughs> All right. So we have, oh my goodness. So again, I think I shared a few minutes ago that um, I learned a lot on the internet. So I have tons of websites out there, but I give you just two. Okay. Just two sites. So it's <laughs> it's um, LanikaScott.com. Again, that's LanikaScott.com and it is spelled L E N I K A Scott.com. And then our site together, you can see the children up there. Um, it's www.tlcmillionaires.com. Again, that's www.tlcmillionaires.com. Okay, all right. Um, Greg, you're quiet. Anything you want to share? No, well, <laughs> real quick, you know, I got. I had to let my wife shine, you know. I'm always getting points in every chance I get. Uh, <laughs> but no, my wife, you know, she's a, a very successful entrepreneur, coaching women, coaching women how to be successful, but also um, being able to coach women through life circumstances and thing like things like that. So even at LanikaScott.com, you'll see a lot about us, our story. You know, you'll see some of the things that she's done. My wife's also done things with graphics, websites, a lot of things like that. Um, and even with TLC, uh, you know, we're, we're entering into a phase of growth that's just going to be phenomenal. Uh, we're doing some great things. So at TLCmillionaires.com, you can see some information about that and learn a little bit more. But before I switch over, I just have a question because when I was surfing Facebook, you know, the check that I saw – <laughs> Tell my listeners about that check that we saw with you two and the family, the girls just on stage. Did you, did you where that was that commission? Let's talk about that. <laughs> like, let me, <laughs> so the niggas reached out and grabbed this. Tell me about that. Individual results may vary. You know, income disclaimer, <laughs> individual results may vary. But when we first started up with the, um, <laughs> let them know, let them know, hey, let them yes, know. Yes, the truth. You yeah. yes. <laughs> we worked very hard. We were uh, one of the founding partners to lead the United States market, and the business just skyrocketed so fast because we have a product that works. And whenever you have something that works and people buy, wealth is generated, and so. Um, over the last uh, 19 to 20 months, we were able to uh, generate $2 million, and that's not $2 million in sales. That's $2 million in our bank account. So it, it's been a blessing. It, so and, and, you know, I, Greg, you probably don't know this, but I remember when your wife reached out to me about the business opportunity, and I was just like, no, that's not for me. No, I'm past this time, and I've watched you guys from afar, and you're just you're just growing. Yeah. And when I saw that, you know, I was I just said, wow, they've really they've really come a long way. So, you I'm know, Cosette, Cosette, let me let me let me say this real quick. Uh, I'm not I'm, I don't want to take away from um, Annie and Cassandra's time, but. You know, real quick, when we started this opportunity out, and we, we, Lanika reached out to a few people, but one thing about it is the people that she did reach out to, they said the same thing, the exact same thing that you said, and it was because of uh, a lot of hurt from the industry, a lot of things that they went through personally while in this industry, but one thing that we found is when you find some truth and you find something that works, 
then you 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 take this step back and you just become the proof for it. And, yeah. and that's what we did. Yeah. Uh, and, mm -hmm. and you know, those even a lot of those folks that <clears throat> began and they said, No, I, I don't I can't right now, it's too much for me right now. They definitely came in both feet. So you know, it's been a great ride so far and uh, we're looking to reach out and help a lot more people. Good, and I saw those rings too. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna get, <laughs> I'm gonna get over to the <laughs> Yes, I saw those. Congratulations to both of them. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> okay. All right. And over to the Enriquez. I want you guys to just share with our listeners where can they find you? What's really going on, Cassandra? I see that you have a banner where you're holding. Uh, is it a retreat? Is it a conference? Let's let's tell the folks about it. Okay, all right. So for those of you who like to be on the couch and tune in from everywhere, I actually have the Love and Success Virtual Summit coming up October 8th through the 10th, and it's no cost whatsoever. So literally, you just go to <coughs> www.loveandsuccesssummit.com, loveandsuccesssummit.com, and I'm interviewing over 20 women who are successful in business and also in love. So, Lanika, we're going to have to catch up before the summit. Hello. And then also, I have a in person <laughs> event happening in sunny South Florida. So for those of you in the cold weather that need to get away on November 21st, so it's a Saturday before Thanksgiving, <coughs> I'm doing Relationship Rewire Live. So it's all about rewiring that relationship with yourself, your significant other, and then also strategic business partnerships. So of course Andy will be in the house. You know, I tie him into everything. He sees a flyer. He's like, where are we going to be? Oh, snap. <laughs> So yeah, we have an event on November 21st. It's going to be a lot of fun in Hollywood, Florida, and you can uh, check that out at RelationshipRewiredLive.com. You know, that that goes back to what Greg said, how somehow I find, I mean, my face pops up on flyers, Cosette, and, you know, and, you know I, I, a couple times I threatened her. I was like, I'm going to call my attorney, and, 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 and she's like, you, you well, you got to marry. You have you no more rights. You marriage I can, license. I can, I can, a liability form, a photo release. A photo is mine. And so, okay. Cosette, my, my, my picture shows up on websites, on flyers, and I'm like. Watch out for the billboard. Yeah, girl. I was like, I didn't approve this, but okay, you know, so. Right. Uh, so I'm like, you know, and just things. Somehow she knows how to put things in the calendar without me like checking it off. Yeah, that's okay. With, with you know, after the fact. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We going to White House next week. We are gonna have a good time. Yes, yeah, so, 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 absolutely. So, so because I'm gonna do the same thing and just basically give uh, two two websites. Uh, you know, the first website, of course, is you know for anybody who's listening in that, that they absolutely know. Uh, that they have a story and they want to be able to leverage that story and, and so I'm a firm believer that the way you connect with your customers your clients or anybody you're trying to enroll in your business is going to be through your story that's probably the shortest distance between you and your next customer and your client and for those people uh, who maybe are saying hey you know I want to learn how to work on my story a little bit more you can go to andyhenriquez.com and so that's basically A-N-D-Y last name H-E-N-R-I Q U E Z. So that's AndyHenriquez.com. But what I also do, as you're aware of Cosette, for the past couple years, I do a free motivational call every Thursday where literally hundreds of people tune in every single Thursday all throughout the U.S. and also from different countries. I do a free uh, teleconference call as well as a live stream. And I would love for the listeners to really join in. And the fastest way for you to do that, just go to showupforyourlife.com free website. It's going to allow me to connect with you. And when you get there, just put your name and your email address. It's going to allow me to send you some instant motivational messages, but also give you the update and the information so that you can join us on Thursdays at 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern time. So I'm looking forward to that. Once again, that's showupforyourlife.com. And we do have a website together, and that's what my wife is sort of signaling and so forth. And so right now it's just a landing page. You can put in some information. We'd love to connect with you. You go to yourpowercouple.com. That is yourpowercouple.com. Uh, and you'll see a little form that you can fill out, and, and someone from our office will contact you, and, and we'll talk about how maybe we could potentially work with each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I have to say, I love Andy's uh, Show Up For Your Life. They're so motivational. Um, when I get an opportunity to just pop in, I, I pop in, I sit here, and I cheer them on. But they're, they're very, very motivational. So for um, any of you out there listening, please, 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 Show Up For Your Life. You will definitely enjoy them, okay? Um, any last words over here from, our, from the Scots? Hey, look. <laughs> 
Again, thanks, Cosette, uh, for allowing us to come on this call. Great to meet you, Andy. Uh, you and your lovely wife, Sandy. Hey, guys. same here, well, man. Yeah. I say a call, and they could correct me. Hangout. <laughs> <laughs> well, look. You guys, thank you so much to both of you lovely couples. I appreciate you. Hopefully, you can go back and watch Empire. The <laughs> <laughs> Like I could catch it if I still wanted to, but, <laughs> but um, seriously, I sincerely appreciate you all, and hopefully for our listeners out there are that, that that tuned in, I sincerely appreciate each and every one of you. And really quickly, um, for those of you who may or may not know, for the full month of October, I am doing an Infinity Wealth Circles Marathon where Every single Wednesday at 6 p.m., we'll be talking about something different. We'll be talking about getting your credit in line. We'll be talking about retirement, investment. We'll be talking about virtue, CFO. You name it, as it relates to finances, as it relates to money, we're going to have an expert speaker um, joining us throughout the month of October. So for all of you on the call, I welcome you to just go to my Facebook page, sign up for our couples. Share the word, spread the word, and I invite you all to join us as well. So with that being said, I am going to sign off and say thank you. And it has truly been a great hour spending my time having this money conversation with the couple. Thank you for having us. <laughs> Thanks for having us. Bye. Bye. Thanks, guys. Appreciate right. you. Okay. <laughs>